questions um, at the end unless, uh, unless we, there's something else that needs to happen. What is it? Um, it's a native Lotus Notes application that IT administrators can use to migrate their users' data to Google Apps. So what is a native Lotus Notes application? A uh, Lotus, native Lotus Notes application is a tool that is built on Lotus Notes. So the code is written in Lotus Script. It installs on a Lotus Notes server, uh, release 6.02, I believe, or higher. Um, it uh, uses native Lotus Notes APIs to access Lotus Notes data. And then it uses our Google G Data APIs to upload that data to Google Apps. Makes it easier and faster for customers to migrate three essential types of data, contacts, calendars, and email. And it also migrates uh, individual address books and individual groups. We've used this tool with 40 companies, including Johnson Diversity, Fairchild Semiconductor, and Capgemini. Um, Capgemini deployed this tool to over 30,000 users at Phileo. They use this tool to migrate those users. Um, and Johnson Diversity had a very effective uh, migration where their error rate, or their, their customer contact rate for their 10,000 users was significantly less than the 3 to 5% that they expected. So they had a very successful migration. This tool does run on Windows. Um, it requires Windows Server 2000 or later. But you can integrate a, a, uh, a server with a number of other servers that are not running Windows um, so that if you have a, uh, an AIX deployment, you can still migrate your data. There are a number of core features that come with this tool that are interesting. One is automated user provisioning, which means that um, we read, the tool will read the users from your Lotus Notes environment, and if they don't exist in Google Apps, it will create them. This is a feature that you can enable or disable. I'll show you that in a moment. As we mentioned before, it migrates email, calendar, context, and groups. And with respect to calendar, it does migrate um, all the recurrence patterns. It does not create um, many individual meetings uh, from a single recurring meeting. It, uh, it also um, properly recognizes the owners of a meeting and um, will fan out the invitations. And I can talk a little bit more about that if, um, if anybody's interested. So it's a high fidelity calendar migration. Um, it allows you to easily rename uh, user email addresses. So the scenario in this case would be if it was chris at google.com in my old environment, my old Lotus Notes environment, and I wanted uh, to provision all my users as new email accounts, chris.vanderbay at google.com, I could do that. It provides the ability to migrate encrypted email. Uh, so users, uh, you can send an email automatically to users, asking them to decrypt their email, and send that, and then when the user decrypts that email, then the decrypted email is migrated to Google. It's very simple to set up. It's a, it's a typical um, database install in Lotus. Uh, it's quite straightforward. Um, and the actual configuration is pretty straightforward as well. There are a series of automated emails that can be sent uh, optionally uh, that are template-based for various steps in the migration. And you can migrate up to 10 users per server simultaneously uh, to complete your migration more quickly. Um, this is important because of some of the restrictions on the Google API side that um, limit the rate at which you can migrate a single user's email. However, you can migrate many, many users simultaneously. So I'm going to, there's a video available online but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to share with I'm going to just show you guys um, the uh, demo, and maybe Michelle, can you confirm that you can see my uh, screen with the uh, system setup selected? Yep, I can see it. Great. Okay. So um, this is the default 
uh, screen for the mail migration database. There are a few core uh, tabs. One is system setup, and then sites, users, logs, and exceptions, and email templates, and of course help. Um, there's a bunch of documentation online. You can review that at your leisure. I'll start with system setup to give you a sense for how straightforward this is. Um, there is a master switch to turn migration on and off, and a set of, and you can specify who is allowed to manage the migration in your Lotus Notes groups, and where the main administration server is going to run. There's a master control for um, how to define the username for Gmail. So most Lotus Notes environments have an internet address field for each person. That is the email address for the person. Uh, in Lotus Notes, it's called internet address. Uh, but this would be your typical um, username. So these are the basic system high-level setup things. Then there are a series of Google domain properties that you set up. This is your Google domain and what the administrator email address is. Um, you set the password here um, for the uh, for the user for the Google Apps administrator. Um, then there are a series of advanced properties, and so I'll call out a couple things. Um, one is, for example, you can limit the maximum size of an of an email. Uh, we currently support up to 25 megabytes uh, in an email upload, uh, so you could uh, limit that. Or, for example, if you wanted to limit the maximum label length um, and so forth, you could do that. So these are the basic configuration options that you would set. Now, once you've set your basic configuration options, you'll set up a site. A site is an office to migrate. Now, if you have many offices, you can still define them all as one site. But if you, all, if you had um, multiple offices around the globe and you wanted to define them individually and define different rules, say, for Japan and Germany and the US, say, different amounts of data to be migrated um, or uh, different times at which to run that migration, you could do that here. I'll show you one site. We just have a global site set up here. Um, and you can see many of these settings so far are the same uh, as you would see in the default global setup that we just went through, that is enabling the, the, a, a switch to enable migration for a given site, um, different uh, and a place to define the time zone location of the site and who can manage it. Um, this option here, to provision user accounts in the Google domain, you may recall from me mentioning that we do allow auto provisioning in this tool. Um, this, this enables you to either choose to enable or disable that provisioning. There's also the notion of a migration start date and a migration end date. So um, this addresses how much email should be migrated. Um, so if you want to say, let's only migrate the past two weeks because you, you want to do something very quick and simple, you could say, OK, go back two weeks in time and only migrate two weeks of email. If you wanted to uh, say, uh, I want to migrate all email, then you could do that as well. And then the number of concurrent user migrations that can be performed in any one time. You could specify that in order to uh, restrict the amount of bandwidth that you are uh, consuming. So then there are a series of basic server settings. Um, if you have many uh, servers in a, uh, a site, um, then you would add them to this domain, and that's where you would pull the data from the users. Uh, and uh, they could also work as slaves to, um, to, migrate, uh, to migrate the data. Uh, there are a series of other um, simple settings uh, where uh, you where the data is temporarily stored. Um, so the data has to be con converted from Lotus Notes to internet format. That's MIME format, and so it's stored locally. And then default user settings. So how do you want to convert uh, folders to labels? So uh, we get this question a lot. Um, so I'll just explain how folder conversion works. Folder conversion works in the same way that our current IMAP implementation operates uh, on Gmail. So if you had a folder, um, here I'll use this as an example. Uh, 
Uh, um, you see here I have users, and underneath it I have pending. When we migrate email, if there was email in users, there would be a label named users, and that email would have um, email, and that label would have email in it. Uh, that was the email in the users folder. And if there was email in the pending folder, there would be a label named users slash pending, and then email on Gmail that had uh, that was in the pending folder would be in the label user slash pending, and so on and so forth for as many levels um, as there is space in the label uh, in the label length. Uh, labels can be up to 120 characters long, although Gmail itself only displays currently 40 characters um, because it starts getting quite long. If you run out of characters, um, the email is placed into um, the closest uh, label. So, for example, let's say that users was actually an extraordinarily long um, nested series of uh, folders. An email that was impending because it wouldn't fit because because the, the, you weren't able to because the system wasn't able to expand the label. Mail would not go into pending because there wouldn't be a pending label. It would just be placed in users and active would be placed in users and so on and so forth. Again, this is described in the documentation, and that's pretty granular, um, but I thought it was worth calling out that detail because we've had those questions from, from customers already. Um, you can specify folders to exclude, such as junk email or deleted items. Um, we don't, by default, uh, specify an exclusion because we want to sort of fail safe. We don't want people to think that um, they've migrated all their data when, in fact, they haven't, uh, say, they haven't migrated their deleted items because they might want to recover them, but it's very easy to, to specify that. Um, there are a number of other options there as well. Um, you can specify whether or not to send notifications to a user. Um, so uh, you can enable these or disable these um, and specify them for individual steps. And there are, are a series of email templates that are provided with the tool. Um, for example, an email that's sent to say, your account's been provisioned, you can now go use Gmail. Or an email that's been sent to say, um, please migrate now. Uh, and the user, uh, and, and that's relevant for a user who has a local, um, a local NSF archive that they wish to upload and migrate, or a user who has to decrypt their email before uh, they need to migrate. Um, and then there's, uh, there's the ability to send an e email that says email has, migration started or migration has completed um, or there was a problem. Um, and you can choose to let users know about those problems or not as you see fit. Um, there are a number of other sort of tricky, tricky things that you may or may not need. For example, uh, needing to go through a proxy in your firewall. Um, there are some custom settings which are very advanced. Um, and then log file retention and how to handle um, how to handle errors. So there are both simple configuration and advanced configuration. Um, you'll get comfortable with these as you read the documentation and you use it yourself. And we always look for feedback on things that we can do better. Um, just to walk through how migration works for the users, um, when you start a migration, a user goes into the pending queue, and they become uh, a pending user. So there are users who are invited. So Sanjeet has been invited, um, and there, you can see when the request was sent. There are users who are actively being migrated. We're not running a migration right now, so no users are actively being migration. Um, no, no users are actively being migrated. And then there are users who, after they're active, they're moved to complete. And you can see here we've migrated a few users. And you can see we've migrated all their mail, all their calendar, all their contacts, and how much data was migrated. Um, you can also view this by status or by site or by server. So if you want to check on the status of your, uh, of your global migration or your New York migration or so forth, you can see that. To add a new user, just to, to add them to the pending queue, you would go to register. And then you can select multiple users and you could add them from, uh, from a server, um, uh, add them from a, a data file. We'll just go ahead and register a single user, um, and we can select the user from our, um, oops, sorry. 
from our user database. Um, and I'm not going to do this right now, but we just select these from our user database, which is a common uh, Lotus Notes behavior. No, I do not want to say this. Okay. okay. As your migration progresses, you'll want to check in on uh, the logs. Um, so, for example, migrations. Um, here is the migration school bus site log. Um, this is just checking uh, the agent is running uh, routinely. So it's just checking to make sure there is anything to do. Um, there are user registrations. Uh, we haven't done those. And there's invitations and reminders. So um, here's one uh, invitation that was sent to Sanji. We saw that before. And it tells you that that was, uh, that that was sent. Um, and then you can also look at sort of all your logs. Send invitations, update repository, et cetera. Um, there are exceptions uh, when there are problems that you can look through so that you know what to do. Um, for example, migration errors, if there was a problem translating um, some data, in this case there wasn't, um, or uh, say missing credentials if you, know, you were unable to log in. Finally, uh, I'll show you email templates. Um, these are the email templates that I mentioned earlier that can be sent. Uh, actually, it'll probably be easiest if I just um, open one up. I'll open up the invitation to migrate. So uh, when a user is invited to migrate, uh, they receive a template email that says, you know, dear whomever, um, and you can modify this or change the greeting. Um, the first thing that a user would do is synchronize their address book. And they'll want to synchronize their address book because that will bring all of their contacts um, into sync. So that when those con so that their contacts will migrate properly, and also it'll bring the groups that that user has. Um, for those of you that aren't super familiar with this, and a group is like a distribution list in Microsoft Outlook. So um, if I had myself and my manager um, in my contact, if I had my manager and my tech lead in my contacts, I might create a group that would be called leads, and then I could just email the leads. Well, this is similar, um, and it, it migrates them over. Similarly, if you have encrypted email, you can click decrypt email to, to decrypt that mail. Um, the users need to do that because uh, they, um, uh, because the, the administrator in Lotus Notes does not have a token or the ability to actually read a, an end user's email. So uh, the end user needs to actually decrypt that email. So there is, and I showed you that, um, obviously there are other, uh, there are other email templates. Um, so that's, that's the migration tool in short. It's not terribly complicated. Um, I'm going to uh, switch back now to um, the presentation. Hey, Chris, this might be a good time to take a few questions. We've had quite a few. They're in the, your My Q&A tab. Maybe okay, two or three, and then we can address the rest at the end. Sure. Let me see here. Um, that's not what I wanted to look at. That's not what I wanted to look at. Oh, I know what I've got to do. Um, one moment. Uh, return. Hold on, I'm trying to find the Q. I've got to find the Q and A Q. Um, it might be minimized in the bottom right. That happened to me. Um, to minimize. Let's see. Return to main window. Thank you. Sorry about this. Okay, let's take a look at the Q&A. Is this sorted in any order, or should I just go from the top? It is not sorted. Okay. Uh, um, does encrypted mail translate to encrypted mail in Gmail? Um, it, it is decrypted into plain text if you choose to. Um, encrypted mail uh, that is not translated does not migrate. Does it migrate data from Domino server or desktop, laptop, or all how the archives the user may have? It is possible to migrate user archives. Um, users must add the archives, um, and there's uh, some documentation on how users would do that. You'd have to explain to your users how to do that. How is this tool different from the tool offered by Binary Tree? Um, this is coming from Google, and it's free. That's one thing. Um, another thing is that uh, Binary Tree, uh, Binary Tree tool, Binary Tree's tool. Um, has a bunch of other features uh, that you can talk to Binary Tree about, um, and is built on uh, a platform that they've been building for a while, um, and runs outside of Lotus Notes and integrates with Lotus Notes. Uh, this tool is a Lotus Notes application natively. 
Um, will this tool be integrated with existing tools like Outlook IMAP, Migration, LDAP, Sync Program, et cetera? Um, I'm not going to comment too much on the roadmap right now. The Outlook IMAP migration is irrelevant because this migrates using our EMAPI, uh, which is the name of our email migration API. That's what EMAPI stands for, Email Migration API. Um, and uh, the LDAP Sync program actually works fairly well uh, with this, and you, so you can run that uh, at the same time. It's not integrated, but you can you can run it. However, user provisioning is also included um, in this this tool, so you may or may not need the LDAP Sync program. Is the 25 megabyte limit just for this migration tool, or is the Gmail attachment size limit been increased? The Gmail attachment size limit has been increased. Um, I was happy to hear that, um, and uh, I hope you are too. Um, can you set up migration to multiple domains, for example, Lotus Notes and holding companies, maybe servicing two companies on the general side of the only so Yeah. Um, so the question is, can you migrate um, a domain to two different Google Apps domains? And the answer is, you would need to run two separate uh, migrations. So you could do that. So you could select the users um, to migrate. Uh, from site A and site B to uh, domain A.com, and then select uh, users from site C and site D to migrate to domain B.com, and you would need to do that as two separate installs. Let's say a user has a one gigabyte mailbox. How long would it take to migrate it? Good question. Um, the limitation on uh, migrate, so there's going to be two factors. Um, one factor will be your outbound bandwidth and how much you have. Uh, more bandwidth will help accelerate you. The second thing um, is going to be that um, we limit the number of emails that may be migrated to 60 email messages um, per minute. That is one message per second at most. Um, this is because Gmail is very, very good at um, uh, sending mail uh, and searching it, um, and so we made optimizations that made it possible to um, send, compose, retrieve, uh, and search email very, very quickly, um, but uh, we did not initially design it to um, take in vast amounts of email, which is what a migration entails. Is the Lotus password brought forward to Google? Um, no, it is not. It, uh, so the user is going to get a new password um, when they're provisioned. Does it handle the case where a document is in more than one folder? Good question, Bob. I always knew that Bob uh, would ask the, the tough questions. And you should talk to Bob, anyone who has questions about binary trees tools. Um, Bob can tell you a lot about them. Um, so let's see. Uh, I think... I think in this case, Bob is talking about an email that is in more than one folder, in which case I believe the answer is yes, and it will be migrated to multiple labels. Um, Google works closely with uh, some third parties to build this tool, um, and uh, but we did uh, work closely on it together. Um, is the Notes app delivered with all the source code? No, it is not. It's a migration tool app customizable. You saw the configuration, um, and uh, so you can see how you can customize it. Um, we're going to continue to improve it over time, um, and uh, you know we'll, we'll improve it in the same way we improve our other products, which is um, we'll try to give you features that are the most bang for the engineering buck that we spend um, uh, based on uh, customer requests, sort of typical stuff. I used the C-Search product to migrate 1,000 users in Peru, and then on occasion we had some products, and C-Search engineers had to take remote control of the application. Who will give us the same kind of support? Um, one of the goals for us is to make sure that our users are happy, um, and uh, we've had some successful customers now uh, using this tool, so we're, we're fairly confident that we've ironed out a bunch of bugs. Um, that doesn't mean that there won't still be bugs. There's always bugs in software. Um, and one of the mechanisms that can be effective um, in sorting through some of these issues 
is uh, setting up a thing like a WebEx or some other remote access tool to work with end users to migrate them. Uh, obviously, that's going to depend on a case-by-case -case basis, um, and uh, it's not part of our typical support program. However, one of the reasons why we're deploying um, the tool in the, in the way that we've chosen to deploy it, that is asking you to request it and sending it out, is so that we have better visibility into who's using it and, um, and how so that we can, uh, we can make sure to provide good support. Um, so Frank is having a problem. What happens with the notes applications itself? This tool does not migrate Lotus notes applications. Any support for calendar resource migration, meeting rooms, et cetera. Um, the tool does not migrate calendar resources currently. Um, you can create calendar resources um, in Google Apps through the API and through, um, and through the, the control panel. Um, if you were to create those resources, and when you migrated the, um, when you migrated the events, the, resource, the resources would be invited when you migrated an event, which means that they would get added to the meeting. What's important in this scenario is that you provision the rooms first, you provision the resources first. Any support for email custom forms? Um, I think the question here is, um, I'm going to take a stab at this. Well, I think there could be two questions in this. Um, one is, do we migrate custom email forms? And the answer would be no, um, because we migrate email. Um, and uh, email custom forms don't subscribe to internet message format, MIME format. Um, the second question that I could take from this would be, um, do you support uh, us sending customized email forms to our end users, in which case the answer would be yes. You could actually build your own email form and, and add it into the, um, to the tool. What happens to a message if it uh, exceeds max size? It is skipped and an error is logged. Hey, Chris. Yes. This might be a good point to move on with the presentation. Just a quick time check, and then we can come back to all the questions at the end. Sure. Okay, and just a quick reminder to everyone, please do put your questions in the module in the bottom right-hand corner, and that way it will be easier for Chris to see and sort them all. Okay. Um, let me see if I can go back to, oops, to, to share my application. I'm going to share the box. Okay, let's talk about the value propositioning and positioning. Um, this is going to be useful for you as resellers. Um, we believe we're ready for Lotus Notes customers. Um, this is a tool that will guide you to easy deployment. Um, the it's a centrally administered server-side tool, um, so your users don't have to do any work. Um, this is a, a, a great way of, of saying we, you can, you as a as an enterprise can migrate quickly and easily. Um, because of this, there's not any downtime. Users can continue to use notes during the migration process, or um, they can immediately start using Gmail when uh, they receive a, uh, an invitation to migrate. You gain some global efficiency with this tool. You can migrate multiple, office, multiple offices simultaneously or separately. You can migrate Europe, for example, on uh, during um, West Coast uh, daylight hours um, so that you can respect bandwidth in different places. Um, and you can assign these controls to various people um, at various levels. And finally, there's centralized event logging um, so that you can manage and monitor um, your migration progress across all of, uh, all, all of the offices um, and that you deploy. Google Apps is a different product from Lotus Notes. Um, it, it's a little apples and oranges in some cases, um, and uh, we like that um, because we think that you get radically reduced costs. Um, you get a, a, a solution that is complete um, with world-class antivirus and anti-spam. You get a solution that uh, includes tons of storage, um, very simple pricing, um, and uh, significantly cheaper pricing than um, even uh, Lotus Live. Um, it gives you the ability to eliminate hardware and maintenance costs, um, which is something that 
many users are, uh, are experiencing. Even if they're looking at their costs as sunk, um, they will need to uh, perhaps do repair work or add storage as uh, they add more users um, or maintain a support contract and so forth. Um, users are, are going to be happier um, migrating from notes to Google because they're going to get universal access. They'll be able to um, use an iPhone uh, through our Active Sync product, product um, or they'll be able to use an Android phone, which will sync natively. They'll be able to use a browser um, or uh, a Mac if they want to get access to, um, to their tools or a PC. It's up to them. Um, we constantly innovate around these tools. At the same time that we announced this, this, this migration tool, we also announced uh, new APIs for Google Calendar and uh, a, ga a gadget framework for Google Calendar. So you can see how we're continuing to innovate there. And we just added, um, we just moved our tasks feature out of labs into um, Google Apps um, proper. So you get um, some constant, you're getting constant feature improvements coming from Google. Um, and we're constantly listening to your feedback and your customer's feedback to improve the product. At the end of the day, um, you're going to free up a lot of IT resources. Um, one, of our, one of our users said that they went from 40 hours per week to two hours per week of IT maintenance um, for, for, in Lotus Notes. So they reclaimed almost an entire employee um, that they could redeploy to doing other more valuable things than managing their email server. There are some great customer references that, that you might have heard about. Um, Johnson Diversity um, chose to go to um, Lotus Notes uh, because they, they were limited in their storage. And they also saw a great opportunity to save money um, and to become more productive. They had 10,000 users across 168 locations. Um, they used the tools uh, that we showed you today. Um, they were smoothly deployed. Um, and uh, they're very happy with the constant pace of innovation that they're seeing. Fairchild Semiconductor um, wanted a, a system that was more modern than their uh, previous Lotus Note system. Uh, they had 5,500 users, and they migrated them in just three weeks. Um, they figure they'll save, across those 5,500 users, about $500,000 a year moving to, Lotus, uh, moving to Google Apps, which is very significant. Um, or at least to me, it seems significant. Um, and what's more is that they chose to do it um, because it was a, a messaging solution. But once they got it in there, they really started to understand the benefits of the collaboration tools. And that's what we see. We see that um, it is hard for some businesses to understand the benefits of the collaboration tools um, that we provide in docs and spreadsheets and sites and um, presentations. Uh, we know them, and, and you probably know them because you've, you've been using them and how powerful these tools can be. But it is sometimes hard to explain. Um, messaging is a powerful switch uh, and a very valuable switch alone. And then once, once users um, switch over, they start discovering uh, these, these collaboration tools. So let's talk a little bit about some objection handling competitive information as you go out there and try to sell folks on Lotus Notes. So what does it not support? Well, there are definitely things it does not support. This tool is by no means completely complete. Um, it is good for most purposes. So things it doesn't support, notes, buttons, action hotspots, and collapsible sections and rich text are not migrated. Attachments to calendar entries are not migrated. Uh, these are both, these, both of these items are things that Gmail does not support. Um, unread marks uh, in, ma in, in Lotus Notes are not retained. So put another way, um, all your mail is migrated as, as, as if it is um, unread. Um, this is a limitation of the Lotus Notes APIs uh, right now, um, and it's something that we're investigating, trying to improve. Um, it's high on our list of coming up with a way to work around uh, this limitation in Lotus Notes. Um, advanced table types, such as tab tables, are converted to simple two-dimensional tables for migration. So somebody says, well, I'm on an older version. I'm on Notes, you know, pre-R6, I'm on R5. You can install an R6 server, migrate your data um, from uh, R5 to R6, 
um, and then you could migrate. That would be more complicated, but you could do that. Um, generally, we're finding that uh, folks are on uh, 7.03 um, or, or other you know, 7.0 environments. Um, what about the Lotus Notes applications? This is a really interesting question um, and has been the source of much debate um, and discussion. Um, some recent press uh, said, well, our solution is a collection of solutions. Um, and uh, that's true uh, in a way. There are many ways uh, within Google Apps to accomplish a task because there are a wide variety of powerful tools. Um, and uh, we've tried to make tools that are uh, both simple to use and powerful and tools that are also extremely flexible um, and powerful. And uh, there, are, uh, there are a number of ways to accomplish um, your Lotus Notes tasks uh, within Google Apps. Um, we find that, generally speaking, um, Lotus Notes environments don't need um, even half of the, the tools that they have built or deployed over time. Um, many of them have gone stagnant. Um, so it's important to inventory the actual apps and inventory the usage and figure out what does need to be migrated. Um, content will migrate very easily to sites um, and, and work seamlessly. Um, more sophisticated applications um, will be more complicated to migrate. Um, and that's a great opportunity for you. Um, and there are simple ways to migrate, say, data collection um, through uh, forms, for example, in spreadsheets, where we have very sophisticated uh, reporting and charting features that are value adds uh, to, your, uh, to your customers and that you get for free. Um, so that would be something um, that I would look at. We are continuing to work with partners to develop tools to migrate um, these data. We built, we, we uh, so some additional facts um, here. Uh, we did not need to cooperate with IBM to build this tool. We do partner with IBM on a number of fronts, um, and we think they're a great partner. Um, but we, uh, we just built this tool on well-documented uh, Lotus tools. Um, it was developed, uh, per, you heard my comment uh, to Bob earlier about how we developed. Um, and earlier you heard me mention that we deployed it to um, 40 customers before we launched this, before we launched it publicly. Um, So some of you may have heard about Lotus Live Notes. Um, we think that this, we think that Google Apps remains a very competitive offering um, because the starting price for Lotus Live um, is nine dollars uh, per user per month if you have existing Lotus Notes seats. So that puts you at one hundred and eight dollars a year. Um, it's more than twice the cost, and you're limited to a one gigabyte mailbox and you have to purchase at least a thousand users, a thousand user license. So, um, you know, for companies that have less than a thousand users, um, they're definitely going to be in financial pain switching. Um, for, user, for companies that have more than a thousand users, um, it becomes an interesting, uh, you know, cost uh, question. Um, but I think that, uh, I think you can find that the web interface, uh, the ability to search, the storage, the anti-spam, the antivirus, our collaboration tools, um, and our ability to collaborate in real time, which is not something you can really do in Lotus Notes, is very powerful. Just to be more concrete about that. Um, in Lotus Notes, when you edit a document, you edit it and you save it. And if somebody else tried to save the same document at the same time, um, you'll get a conflict. Um, in our Google Docs or spreadsheets, you can actually edit in real time. You can see uh, where, um, in, in spreadsheets, you can see where an individual user's cursor is um, or uh, what cell they've highlighted at the time. Um, and that makes um, iterating on a document or a project very powerful. There are a bunch of resources available for you at google.com slash apps slash notes. There's a customer-facing presentation that you can show. Um, there's a data sheet on this migration tool, just a one-pager. There's a white paper um, that we released on the 14th, um, and that talks about a process that you can bring to your, um, to your customers um, to introduce them to, you know, how do you, how do you inventory your um, 
your, your existing Lotus Notes apps and what's available for you to migrate uh, various types of applications. There are also a bunch of customer references, including um, two videos um, uh, at, from Johnson Diversity. Uh, there's also a video of this tool um, in operation uh, so you can see how, so you can show your customers how it will work and they can get a sense for how straightforward this is. And those, th those first three bullets will all be posted on the apps.getportal.com website today as well. So well, let's see, should, uh, how much time do we have left here? We have about 15 minutes, so I think we can go back to questions now. All right. Um, we will go back to questions, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, one moment here. While Chris pulls this up, I just want to remind everyone that today's presentation and a recording of this webinar will both be available on apps.getportal.com. There's a link on the home page to webinar archives, and if you click there, you're going to be taken to the presentation, and then by tomorrow, we'll have the recorded version. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let me see where we left off. One moment, please. Can we migrate um, individual NSF files? Yes, you can. I believe I answered that one before. Um, individuals can upload them. Does the Start Migration User button start immediately or put them in a queue? Good question. Um, it puts them into a queue, um, and then there are uh, effectively threads um, that run and pick up the users. So as you're, if you're migrating 10 users simultaneously, the first 10 users will get picked up. Um, and then once a user completes, then it'll go and it'll pick up the next user in the queue and so on and so forth. Um, so you can add users to the migration. Um, and then if you disable the migration, it just will pause all those threads and you start it again. It'll pick them up uh, again. How do you let users know their new Google password? Um, you can configure Google Apps to send email uh, to those users. And then the users will can be configured to change their password uh, after they log in. Any support for mail rules? We do not migrate mail rules uh, today. Although there is an API now in, um, in Gmail to create mail rules uh, or create um, labels and filters uh, dynamically. So, it, you can imagine it's something that, that we'll look at. Is the MIME conversion from notes email done by note services or by Google code? It's done by note services. How do you handle mail routing to users who have already been migrated? That's a great question. Um, generally, uh, what I would say is that um, a good way to do this is to um, first provision your users uh, provision all your users first in Google Apps, um, then switch over uh, and do dual uh, so and then do dual delivery um, for a period, um, and then uh, switch the dual delivery to point only to Google, and then migrate uh, the email. What you'll find if you do this is that um, while it is you can migrate uh, just a, a limited date range, so you don't have to re-migrate the mail that uh, was dual delivered. And you would overlap it a little bit because Gmail will deduplicate emails, so users won't end up with duplicated emails. Although folders, if they were to move email around in different folders, those might be missing. Um, so that would be a, a reasonable way to go. Um, let's see. How does the migration tool handle recurring meetings and events? Well, it adds them through the GDN API, which supports recurring meetings. Um, so uh, they're added, and they show up as recurring meetings. Presentation is available for download on apps.getportal.com. You can migrate folder structures. Um, as we talked about before, folder structures are transformed into a series of labels. Um, so the answer is yes. I have a pilot running now. How do I get the software and install ASAP? Great. Um, there is a link 
um, in the blog post that we posted on the 14th um, to request access to the tool. Just fill out the form. Uh, and uh, we will send you uh, a link um, if you're a Google Apps Premier customer uh, by the end of the day. And hey, that's the last of the questions. Um, anything else that anybody wants to add to the Q&A? I will stay on for a few more minutes to collect any questions if, if you guys think of them. Um, and then I'll share those with Chris, and we'll follow up with everyone. And I'll also provide that link in a follow-up email that Chris just mentioned, so you can all get access to the tool. Um, with that, Chris, unless you have anything else, I think we can wrap it up. I guess I would just ask um, if, if anybody has feature requests or experience from customers that they know that uh, this tool won't provide, and you want to um, share a, uh, and, and you want to share that with us, feel free to just, you know, drop it into the Q&A, and um, Michelle will make sure to uh, get it to me. And, uh, you know, we'll take that uh, into a strong advisement, because we really want to make sure that um, you folks are successful in deploying the tools and deploying Google Apps. We're looking forward to a really, really strong uh, Q3. Right, and everyone can also email me ideas directly, and I can make sure those get to Chris. Great. Well, then, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate uh, appreciate the time today. Uh, best of luck to you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.